Special greetings to you again. Here we are, Reverend Lucille Baird. Reverend Chris uh, Baird. From Out of Mount Zion's Missions. We're here with the series again, We Speak to Nations. Yes. Such a pleasure to be able to share with you again. We enjoy talking to you. And we enjoy all of the, the, the questions that you sent to us. And we hope that we were able to answer some of them for you. And that you are happy with our answers. And um, we will continue to hear from you some more. And whatever um, you, know, you sent to us, we would pray and ask God to give us the guidance and the wisdom to be able to answer you again, you know, and to be able to satisfy your concerns. Um, keep praying for us that God will use us to just speak to nations, not just to Barbados, but to nations. We've, we are called, we have an apostolic uh, and a prophetic mandate on our lives, and we want to fulfill that apostolic and prophetic mandate that God has given us, especially in this day and age. May the voice of the prophet, the voice of the apostle must be heard and should be heard. We represent God in the earth. And so he will make provision for us to be heard. And I pray that as we, as we speak to you, speak to nations, that you will be blessed and challenged to be changed and to become what God will have you to be and to do what God will have you to do under the empowerment of the Holy Spirit Amen. and the righteousness of God. We want to continue on the series we started on, um, on the last um, session, we talked about the God of the mountains the God is the God of the valleys. Yes. And we dealt with Moses primarily um, in, the, in the wilderness and on the mountains with God. And we talked about what happened when he came down and there was just a complete rogue spirit taking over his camp. And you know, God used him to be able to bring you know, some restoration back to the camp after many died. Um, and we thank God because we, we learned then that God that spoke to him on the mountain top was the same God that was down in the wilderness but they did not realize that they thought that God was not there because Moses wasn't there and today we want to continue to talk about the God of the mountain tops being the God of the valleys and we want to look primarily to Elijah that great prophet that God used so tremendously in the Bible that prophet that was taken that never saw death Yes, that same prophet, that prophet, he went through his mountain top experience, you know, up on the mountain calling on fire from heaven on the, fault, uh, on, on the altar, and the altar, and the altar um, you know, being wet and soaked, and then Mount Carmel. And, oh, on Mount Carmel, and then God manifesting his power by consuming the burnt offering at his request. Look at God. <laughs> if we are faithful, God will show up. Yes. And God will show off. To the unsaved, to those skeptics that don't know that your God is a God of fire, God will prove Himself in magnificent yes. ways yes, if you will be prepared to test Him. Elijah was prepared to take God and test Him. Is he any man that's bold enough to say it? All of those of you who would want to stand on God's side, come up and stand on God's side. And the people will be prepared to do that, and God was prepared. Once you open your mouth, God will come by and God will speak to you. I want to talk about. about the word of God from 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21. And uh, it says, Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt in between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. Yes. But if Baal, then follow Baal. And the people answered him, Not a word. Then in verse 38, Okay, look at verse 38. He went on the mountain. He called, he called all of the prophets of Baal, 450. And he called the prophets that, that ate at Jezebel's table, 400. And he said, listen, my God is the God of fire. Is your God a God of fire? My God is the God of the mountain tops. He can fight in the mountain tops. He can fight in the valleys. So if, you can, if your God can prove himself to be the God of fire, let that God be the winner. Yes. Yeah? I know that, that the God that doesn't answer my prayer, his subjects and his followers will be destroyed. Yes. He was very, very determined yes. to prove that God was real. And so he asked him to come up on the mountain and just begin to sacrifice the Lord. He called all the people out. And the Bible said that King Ahab, because he worked with King Ahab, got all the people out and the prophets out to watch and to, and to participate. The prophets were going to be able to offer and call on their gods. And Baal's prophets called on their gods. He told him, you go first. Because he knew that his God was the God of the mountain. 
And he, he, he told them to go first. And they went first and they prayed and prayed and prayed. And called and called and called on Baal. And of course you know what happened. There's only one God. Yes. And that's Jesus. That's our God. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want to say this to you as you watch me. I give respect to other religions. People have a right to choose what religion they want to follow. But I want to declare that Jesus Christ is the only God. Yes. That's what I know. Amen. And that's what I believe. He's the Amen. only God. Word of God says that there's no other. Besides him, there's no other. And the time has come where every knee must bow. Yes. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He's the one that created the earth. He's the creator of the universe. He's the creator of you and I. He's the one that built the church. And I'm sorry if it sounds a bit chauvinistic. Jesus is God. And he's the only way to go to the Father. And he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. And the same way that Elijah was prepared to, to prove that, I'm prepared to stand and prove that even in this day and age, in 2020, that God can, can heal people from coronavirus. We just had an awesome miracle of my niece in England who was in a, 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 in a critical state, in a, self, it was, was a uh, medically induced coma because of, of her um, difficulty. And, and, and you know, they really had a bad prognosis about her. You know, and we prayed and God is awesome. On the same day as we celebrated Easter, Resurrection Day, the day that Jesus um, came back from the dead, she rose up, she got up, she came back from the coma and sat up and making remarkable recovery. And I believe God. So I want to just take a few seconds to let you know that I'm prepared to stand up like Elijah and say that by all we will think to God's two opinions, I want to say to you that's all in right now. Make up your mind. Who God is? Who's God? In this pandemic, you need to seek, seek the real God. You need to serve the real God. You need to call on, call on people and say, listen, every other God that you've tried has not helped you. But I know God. Hallelujah. I yes. know God as yes. a healer. Amen. I know God as a deliverer. Yes. I know God that can fix that. I know God that can see you through. I know a God that coronavirus cannot defeat. And that God is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know that God. I just want to just take that few seconds off to say that it had to be said. Let me get back to Elijah. <laughs> calling them, calling them all of those false gods. Yes. Praise God. And he, he, he did it with the same, you know, enthusiasm that I had just now. Because he knew his God. And we need to have Christians with enthusiasm about God. Don't lose your enthusiasm with God. Don't lose your excitement. You know, the, the, the world of enthusiasm about their heroes and, and their, um, their role models and idols and stuff. Be enthusiastic about Jesus Christ as God. And after the, the, these prophets of Baal couldn't get an answer, they cut themselves and jumped up and down, broke on the altar. <laughs> and, and, and Elijah mocked them and said, Call it out, allow them, maybe he's gone shopping, or maybe he's taking a sleep. You know, and they, they never heard anything because. There's no other God that hears and answers. And the God we serve, Jehovah God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And then he allegedly took the whole altar and broke it down and brought it back again. Pour water and pour water until it ran down to the trench and all that. Because he said, I'm proving God today. And even my God can, can suck up, swallow up the water and bring on fire. And that's exactly what he did. He called on God. And fire came down. Praise God. The Bible says, Verse 38, he told, in 37, he said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, for this people may know that thou art the Lord, the God, and, and thou has turned their heart back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Mighty God. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said, take the prophets of Baal and let no one of them escape. And they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Praise be to God. On the mountain top, seeing the power of God, manifest the power in the middle of a famine. There was no water. There was a drought. And because there was drought, of course, the crops can't grow. And so he allegedly um, declared that we're going to have water, we're going to have rain. Wind's going to come. 
after he that he, he, the Lord promised him that he would he was he would have rain. And he told hey, have I hear the sound of abundance of rain. The God who performed the miracle on the mountain top is the God who's gonna send rain. Bless God. And we know that it happened just as he prophesied. God kept working, showing his manifested power on behalf of this mighty man of God. And the Bible said in verse 46, and the hand of God was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to enter some Jezreel just to be able to see the rain come. Praise God. And I believe that even as we believe God, we're going through a drought right now. We're going through a kind of a famine right now. We're not able to access food as we used to. We used to be able to walk in the supermarket. We took walk into the supermarkets and picking up our trolleys for and shopping at, for granted. Yes. We were on our mountain tops. We took going to the pharmacy, calling the pharmacist and ordering our medication going to collect it as a luxury. Yes. We took one of these gas station, driving up and saying how much gas we want as a luxury. We took everything that we used to do on the mountain top as a luxury. Now we are in a valid situation. Are we going to curse God? Or are we going to prove God? Are we going to still give him praise and thanks? If we can't get the food, I have not been able to really go because I can't really manage the rush <laughs> and the crowd. You know, it's too much that in the hot sun. It really isn't. And so I just have to rely on God because He promised this year He'll lead me and feed me. I just got to trust God to lead me and feed me. If there's a drop in the land, I got to eat. If there's a drop in the land, I have to drink. I'm the servant of the living God. He has to feed me. If He feed me by a river, if He went a river to feed me, He's going to feed me. And I want to say to you, those of you who are out of jobs and worrying and can't sleep, God will feed you as long as you trust Him. Yes. You were in the mountaintop and you gave your tithes to God in your offerings, and now you're in the valley. God is going to feed you and take care of you. So, don't let the devil discourage you in this and destroy you in the valley. Here, the mighty man of God, Elijah, was on the mountaintop, bringing no fire from heaven, and then suddenly he got a message. One message changed him from Jezebel. Man, listen, what have you done to, my, to the prophet? To the, to, the, to the prophet? Listen to this. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done in chapter 19, verse 1. I'm reading. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with a sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger. The devil will always have a messenger to come to speak into your ears. It may be somebody at work that's a messenger. Somebody in your neighborhood that's a messenger. Somebody in the church that's a messenger. To come and give you bad news. You want to be able to, to close your ears and say, tell the Lord, don't let that person call. Lay hands on your phone and say, this telephone today will only ring with somebody to bless me. And I can bless. You've got to block off all the negative things that come in your, your space to make you go into your valley situation. Sometimes just a little phone call, just one little, little um, foot, um, a text, or a, 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 one of those little these messages that you send out, you know, and the WhatsApp messaging, you know, a little voice note, can make you go into a, a valley. So sometimes you've got to really be careful who you open your ears to and your spirit to. A messenger. Who's your messenger today that's caused you to be in that valley? Who was the one that, that the devil used to put you there? You have to be able to plead the blood of Jesus and come out of that. Get out from there because the God of the valley is the God of the mountain. And the same God that was with you in the mountain where you were on fire and you were leading worship and you were preaching in the pulpit and people were touched is the same God that's with you now in the pandemic. God is faithful. He's a God of the mountain. He's a God of the good times. He's the God of the bad times. He's the God of the night. He's the God of the day. He is still the same God. She said, my sister Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me. And more also if I don't make that a life as the life of one in demand of them tomorrow. But this time, said, in other words, the same you kill the prophets, I'm going to kill you. Yes. She tried to him with death. Yes. And what happened? Then he's praying and said, thank you, Lord. It's happening. Thank you, Lord, for the, for the, for the challenge. Thank you, Lord, for the threat. I can nobody believe you? No. The same powerful man of God that stood up against those prophets, 450 at one point, and made sure that they were slain down by the brook Kidron. Yeah? And, and taunted them. And so the same man, when he saw that, that message, he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But what I want to say to you is, the servant that was with him, should have been there to give him counsel and encouragement. He was a mighty man of God, doing all these exploits, and you have a servant with you that can't 
go with you. You just left him there. He left him there because he was not saying, he wasn't saying, man of God be an encouragement. Man of God be strong. The servant should be encouraging the pastor. Sometimes you pastors, you go through a lot of discouragement and there's nobody there. Happens, all of us, to tell you, be encouraged. When you're in your valley, nobody sees and talks to your call. And that's sad. Because everybody thinks the pastor can do it. <laughs> the pastor is mighty and anointed. But listen to me, church. Pastors go through valleys and pastors go through mountains. And when you're in the valleys and the, the mountains, everybody says, wonderful pastor, great word. Pray for my oil. Bless me, Jesus. Hallelujah. But when you're in the valleys, you don't hear the phone is silent. So we have to be able to encourage. This servant left the man of God to go into the wilderness by himself. And sometimes the song says, you have to walk that lonesome valley. You have to walk it by yourself. Nobody else is going to walk it for you. You've got to walk it by yourself. And that's really applicable for me in the valley. But guess what? God is still God. The God that came down and answered by fire. Where, is, where was he? Where was he? Elijah could ask that question. You going to let Jezebel kill me? Where is it? But God was not going to let that happen. The Lord will not allow the devil to destroy you. Yes. He will not allow yes. the enemy to have yes. his way with you. Yes. Yes. God has made covenant with you to keep you alive, to sustain you, and to preserve you. And he will not let no unclean Jezebel spirit destroy you in your valley situation. So get out of your valley. So maybe you put yourself there by listening to the wrong message, to the wrong person. Get out of that valley and get back to where God will have to be. In that valley, he had no food, nothing. The Bible says he went there, he went out there without any food. And he slept on the juniper tree and an angel came in verse 5 and touched him and said, Arise and eat. He didn't even have food. He had to have food fed by the angel. I want to say to you that where you are right now, God is sending an angel. May God speak to someone right now to be an angel to you. May God speak to some word to somebody to tell yes. them, to mm -hmm. call you. To, may that telephone ring with encouragement to you. And it's feeling discouraged. May you feel that mighty hand and comforting hand of God in your life. And the angel woke him up. And so God wants to wake you up today from that slumber. And tell you, get up, get up and eat, man. I'm still God. I'm still with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I was with you on the mountain top yes, last, last week. With the fire, I'm the still God of the fire. Why are you here? What are you doing here? And there was a point where God asked, he like, what are you doing here, buddy? I'm still God, I'm still fighting for you. You think I'm going to let some unclean person, God will not let unclean people touch his, his servants and have their way over them. Are you hearing me? So God is fighting for you. The Bible says she baked the cake and gave him, and, and he went into a, 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 a journey. And then he looked to see God speak, and God, he saw a mighty strong wind that ripped up the mountains. And he saw an earthquake. Not that it's damaged to lay saw fire. He looked to see God in all of that. He was like saying he looked to see God in the, in, in the, in the all of the, the, the theatrics. theatrics and the, all of the stuff. The magnificent. Yeah. In this big, it's, 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 big you know, shamine. And God is quietly talking to you, even now. God is quietly talking to you in a quiet way. Softly telling you, come out of it. I'm God. I still love you. I'm still with you. The God of the mountains, the fire, remember? The fire and exploits that you did for me. How you preached for me and, and prayed and people got touched and stuff. How you were able to minister for me and tell people about me and love on me and, you know, show yourself to be a man of God for me. I still love you, even in your valley situation. Get out of it and get back to your work. Get back to doing what God will have you to do. Pastor Chris. God is indeed the greater. God is greater. He's not only greater, he is the greatest. All of the gods are certainly gods of men. But God made the heaven and the earth. When we stand and make, stand upon God's word, and we instruct, and he will instruct us, when we intercede before him and give us critical instructions what to do at critical times. He liked to challenge God to read, uh, but rather interceded to God to show his sovereign power to people, his people Israel, in the face of a wicked king called Ahab and his wife Jezebel. What God did, God turned up. 
Yes, he did. When we call upon yes, God. He did. When we are at our worst moment, when it seems as though all hell is broken around mm -hmm. us, the mighty are talking loud. Those who have the power are speaking in, 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 in flame words, trying to reduce us to nothing. God will stand. God will always stand and defend his word. I want to let you know, you're not serving a weak God. Yeah. You're not serving a maybe God. You are serving the God of the universe. <clears throat> Who still holds the word in his hand? Whatever you're going through now. If you wait now at your Mount Carmel and you want to know what to do, trust God. Look to him. It is no point haunting between two opinions. If God is God, serve it. If you lose your life doing it, still serve him. The tree he says something very amazing. If we, we will not go down to you even if we lose our lives. We will not we will not surrender. We will stand resolute. If God delivers, we still be if God doesn't even believe us, sorry, if God doesn't even deliver us, we will still believe in him. We will still trust him. And certainly God came through for him. Now it also tells us that I doubt even although we, we perform some mighty acts. We recognize from the larger story that we're still human beings. Yes. And in human beings, we have our moments. Mm -hmm. After huge, magnificent <laughs> act of God in his life, a woman sent a message. Yes. Because for a moment we saw the power and the influence of a woman. Bring your head on, on, the, on, on, the, on probably the, the authority, rather. Because Ahab's king, Ahab was king, and Jezebel was the wife. But we see how how much influence human beings have. And God has given man tremendous power. But we will always we must always remember, we must never forget that all power comes from God. Yeah. And although we have power, God determines where power will be used. And in our case, I want you to hear this church. I want you to hear this man home of God. If all do things will happen to us. God will always do what happens in your life so we get the glory. God will get glory out of everything that's done. Whether God delivers you from that specific thing there and then, or he delivers you later. If he delivers your life or in death, God will get the glory. Yes. What we must never do, run from the enemy and run from our God. We might, we, we, if, we, we, if we ever run for our enemy, run to our God. Yes. And our God will strengthen us, strengthen, strengthen us enough. He will energize us enough. He will give us enough power to overcome whatever the enemy throws at us. That's what he did in Elijah's case. He yes. went to the wilderness. But God stood with him. Because God will never let you know when all your confidence is in. And you, we're aware that God knows our flaws. He knows our weaknesses. He knows what we go through. But he will never abandon us in those days. Where you serve God, you will serve a God that loves you so much that heaven or hell will not stop him from loving you. Heaven or hell will not stop him defending you. <laughs> Nothing this world can stop God from coming through for you. We can trust him. As he did in Elijah's life, he will surely do it in your life and my life. Please. In all things, trust him. He will see his truth. God bless Thank you, Pastor Chris. One of the things that the angel um, did for him, the angel came again, twice he visited him. He came again, the Bible said in verse 8. And the angel, and, he, and, he, and verse 7, and the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. Mm -hmm. God knows if it's too great for you or not. Yes. God knows if the journey is too great. And God was saying, what is, you need to supply you strength for the journey. The angel bought the right food and said, rise and eat. Yes? Because the journey is too great for you. I want to say to somebody right now, arise and eat on this word. Yes. Because the journey is too great. Arise and eat on the prayer that we're going to pray at this point. Because the journey is too great for you. Yes. We see the angel food of prayer today. Yes. And blessings. And rise up, get up from where you are, lying down, despondent and discouraged and full of anxiety. 
So many people are saying that they're going through anxiety because they're locked in their homes. They don't know what's going to happen about the coronavirus pandemic. Is it going to get worse? And people feel like they might starve to death and run out of food. All kinds of crazy things the devil is saying. Do not listen to the messenger of hell. Listen to God. Yes. Arise and eat the word. Yes. Eat God's word. Read the word. It will sustain you because the journey is too great for you. God knows when the journey is too great for you. And you will not allow you to go through more than you're not able to bear. For out of the affliction, he giveth more grace. He giveth and giveth and giveth again. The angel came a second time, hallelujah, and fed him and said, Rise and eat, because the journey is too great for, you, for thee. And he arose and they eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat. May you go in the strength of this yes, word today. In Jesus name. May you arise and go in the strength of this word. Yes. The word that is God is the God of the mountains. And he's a God of the valley. He's with you in the mountains and he's with you yes. right there in the valley. May this word be the strength that you need. Yes. The food that you need, the meat that you need to help you to rise up. Because God understands that it's too great for you. The burden is heavy. Family sick. Bills piling up. No job, no money coming in. That's a lot to carry. God is feeding you now a word to stand because he wants to show. And he's going to show you his marvelous promise and power. We're going to pray for a miracle and breakthrough before we close this forum. We're going to declare apostolically that you are getting a breakthrough, a supernatural breakthrough, and send us and tell us about us. Send us the praise report. Because when we pray, we believe that God will work in Jesus' name. And the Bible says that he went up. Verse 8, he rose and they eat. Listen to this. And drink and went in the strength of that meat. Forty days and forty nights. Wow. Onto the mount, he got back to the mount of God. Hallelujah! Yes. He got back to the mount of God. You're not going to be in the valley all the time, because God will send me to strengthen Amen. you to get Amen. back to your mount, the mount of God. And when he got there, God was there waiting for him. God sent an angel, but when he got back to the mount, who spoke to him? God spoke to him himself, and begin to tell God all the things. Huh? Uh, when, he, when he came to, to, to the cave. Elijah and the word of God came unto him. God said, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm, 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 I'm jealous for you. and told, uh, you know, I, I've done you know, all the things that you could do in the church of Israel. Forsaking a covenant, torn down the altars and slaying your prophets and so on. I'm the only one left to see. Listen, God don't want this sad story. God doesn't want to know you can get up. Forget the sad story. God's got a way out for you. Yes. God has prepared a way of escape yes. for you. Praise the name of God. Yes. And so, you know, you look for God to come in the, in the wind. You look for God to come in the earthquake. You look to God to come in the fire. But today God is talking to you in a still small voice through ourselves. My husband and I to tell you to rise up that he's with you. And that you are his child. And that he's with you in the mountains. And he's with you in the valley. Today I pray and I declare blessings yes. for the Jesus listeners. Name. Yes. The viewers, yes. I bless you again. In Jesus' name. Every darkness I declare, I speak in to you. In Jesus, Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, hover. Yes, Lord. And you hovered on the water in the beginning when there was in no life. Jesus' name. And God said, let there be, and the Spirit of God hovered upon the waters. Yes, Lord. And created life. God, create life upon this individual. Yes. These individuals, these people. Strengthen them, Lord, who did. With, with Elijah, who sent food to Elijah. To an angel. To strengthen them to go the journey back to Mount Horeb. Yes, yes. Cause them to get back on the mount, Lord. Cause them to know that God is taking them by his strength, by his strong arm, yes. by his outstretched hands, up on the open heaven, straight back to the Mount yes. Horeb, yes. where you can hear God and see God. God, they're not going to die in the valley. I reject it in Jesus' name. I declare all things are well. I declare you walking through the streets of Amen. Barbados again. Amen. Stories are opening again. We're gonna have, the commerce is coming back again. The economy is rising again. Jobs are coming back again. Hotels are opening up again. I prophesy to this nation, we will not die in the wilderness. Amen. We will not die in the valley. You will bring us back to Mount Horeb again. And we shall experience your power and your glory because you're the God of the mountains. Yes. You're the God of the valleys. Yes. You'll bring us back to the mountain top. Yes. Enjoy you, yes. you again. To enjoy your favor and your love you, and your Lord. blessing. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yes, amen. Praise God.